What's up guys? Good morning and uh, welcome. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the topic of the title, The Lord. Now, uh, whenever we talk about the Lord, um, it's important to understand that yes, God is our Lord. He's our, our Adonai, our creator, and uh, and we need to obey him and, and follow him uh, with our whole hearts. But Throughout scripture, I see multiple times where Yahweh, Yahuwah, is wanting to replace this title, the Lord, with something far more personal, uh, whether it be his name or, or a relationship that's more comparative to a, a loving uh, bride to her spouse or a son to their father. And we have multiple examples throughout the scripture, and, and I'm going to bring these up real quick to to kind of show you guys. Um, but um, let me just pull this up real quick here, and we're going to get into some scripture. Uh, I'm going to be comparing the book of Hosea to the story of the prodigal son. And there's some interesting things here, and let me just go ahead and screen share. In the book of Hosea, we have this amazing story of redemption of a guy who goes and redeems this bride. And, and for those of you who um, have never heard this before, I find it interesting to talk about how, uh, did you know Yeshua, Jesus, was actually named after two people in the Bible. There's two people that share the name of the Messiah, and one of them being Hosea. So, did you know Joshua's name, before it was um, changed to Joshua, was Hosea, salvation. And uh, also, you have Hosea, who is this perfect example of the Messiah, who has this just whole beautiful story of redeeming the whoring bride, which is us. These people that have constantly and consistently gone away from the person who loves us the most. And instead of rejecting and, you know, stoning her, this, this guy, Hosea, he goes and he buys her for this insurmountable price. Uh, I don't know if that was the right word, but it was just a, a big bag of just gold for this woman. Um, and so in this uh, passage in Hosea, it talks about, and Hosea 2.14, after these days where she's gone and went after other lovers and forgot me, saith Yahuwah. We'll talk about that in a second, the Lord. Therefore, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Hosea 2.14, and I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of Accor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Think about that joy of the people of God as he rescued them and triumphantly came in and saved them from their slavery and from their persecution and, and trials there in the land of Egypt and brought them into his covenant, into the wilderness to woo them. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. And shalt call me no more Baali. For I will take the names of the Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven, with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. Now this is all about him wooing the people that have been called by his name. This is some marriage language. And up here, this is what I wanted to point out for you guys. And it shall be that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi and shalt call me no more Baali. Now, let's go ahead and look up what this word Baali is in the Strong's. Blue Letter Bible is a wonderful tool. You guys can use it to kind of do further research on your own. But Baali is my Lord. So, 
yes, it is the deity, Baal, which is also meaning the Lord. But this is an interesting thing that we're seeing here because the, the Hebrew translation of this, uh, Baali or master, is this, this term of, of title that was given to all these false gods. Oh, this is a Lord, the Baalim, uh, the, the different gods that the people would follow and go after. They were lords and they lorded over these people's lives because of wickedness. Now, I would say in contrast that Yah, our Father in Heaven, instead was wanting these people who he's wooing and he wants to make this marriage contract to, to call him husband. So in this verse here in, in Hosea, whenever it says, And it shall be that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall call me no more Baali, he is saying, Thou shalt call me your husband, your 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 man, and you won't be calling me the Lord, my my Lord, my master anymore. Because it's a different type of relationship. Uh, it's a much more intimate and personal relationship, uh, far beyond a, a servant to a master. Instead, it's the loving relationship of a wife obeying and seeking to please her husband because there's love there. There's a relationship of love there. And yes, there are servants that love their masters, but how much more beautiful is this process of him wooing her and wanting to make a marriage covenant and vow. And uh, and so that's one of the examples I wanted to use. Um, in Matthew 7, Yeshua says that it says here in Matthew 7, 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven... Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them will be like unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And, um, and this is a, a major concept, because there's a lot of people out there who have this outward title, the Lord, God is my Lord, Yahuwah, whether they know him by name or not, is their Lord, but do they do the things that he asks of them? Do they do the things that he commanded in the word? Do, do they seek to understand and obey the instructions of God? Uh, Bible, uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? Well, I think that's really what we're starting to learn as we're looking through these passages is he's tired of people who claim we are your servants. We are we are the people that that are saying, Lord, you're your Lord, your master, but don't obey him. Because it's not in their heart to. They they have not yet found that love, that deep passion that a loving bride would to their husband to seek to please him and to seek to want to do the things he would want for their household and for their their family. And um, another example of this change from a, a lording and masterful position to something more personal is this story of the prodigal son. And um, I'm just going to pull uh, this picture up here real quick. Uh, you know, the, the story of the prodigal son is one, of course, that many people are familiar with, but where this wayward son goes out into the world and he seeks to get his own inheritance, and he seeks to fulfill his own lusts. But then he comes to find that he was better off in his father's household than he ever was out in the world. And he says to himself, in the pig's pen, at the end of the day, Man, if only I had gone, if I only could go back to my father, because it would be better for me to be there 
And so let's go ahead and read, and this is in, in Luke 15. And it says here in verse 17, But when he came to myself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Let me call you Lord again. Let me call you Master. Just let me get out of this pig slop where I found myself. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put on a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Guys, I'm going to suggest this, is that our Father in heaven, far more than wanting to have you be a, a cowering servant, and of course we need to have the fear of the Lord because He is our Creator. He made us. But He wants a deeper, more personal relationship. Something that goes beyond Master, Master, Lord, Lord, and goes to my husband, my father. Um, just the, the different types of relationship that He's detailing here are much more personal than master. Um, it's it's something that's much closer. And so, uh, just some examples here. Um, you know, in our King James Bible, for example, um, this is something, an interesting tidbit, um, tidbit I want to share with you guys. But throughout the scriptures, throughout all of, for, for example, in the King James Bible, the word God and Lord in the English translation in most of our Bibles, not just the King James Bible, is translated in 6,972 places wrongly. It's a replacement for his name, his personal name, the Tetragrammaton, yod heh vav -Heh, Yahuwah. And it just shows us that people have this desire to replace something so personal like his name his personal name that he gave to Moses and the children of Israel the name that David called on when he he prayed and he worshiped and he replaced and we've replaced it with the Lord uh, which you know it, once again Baali my Lord you know this is something interesting because in the story of uh, Elijah, Elijah challenged the people and he was he was like, look, choose this day who you will serve. He drew a line in the sand pretty much and it was like, if if Yah, Yahuwah, is your God, Yehovah is your God, serve him. But if Baal is your God, then serve him. You see, the people were mixing worship. They were living in the world, taking a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they were also saying, oh, and we're going to call him Master and Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they were mixing the two together. And and guys, in our Bibles, the reason I, I showed you that, that interesting um, uh, translation thing with all caps, the Lord, is that it says in that scripture, if the Lord is God, then follow him. And it's an interesting thing that the Lord is translated in the Hebrew, back to the Hebrew, Baal, Baali, or Master. But then he says later on, if Baal is God, then follow him. So it's almost as if he's saying the, the same word. But no, we've replaced Yahuwah, his personal name in that passage, um, with once again a title. And, and also, you know, just to bring this into a more applicable thing, if, if God, if Yahuwah is our, our creator, our master, and, and we are wanting to have this love relationship because what have he, he's done for us through his son, Yeshua, 
uh, we need to start l- calling on his name and, and, and seeking to have that relationship that is far more personal than a servant to a master. It needs to be more of a, a, a wife that's wanting to please her husband in every facet and every way possible to fulfill a marriage covenant or likened unto a son who is seeking to learn and obey and and please his father. And these are much more personal terms, personal ways of relating to our Father in Heaven. And so, this is just a a little study I wanted to share with you guys this morning. Uh, Hopefully you find this interesting. If you like this video, please like it, uh, please share, and um, yeah, guys, let's get into a deeper, more personal relationship with our Father in Heaven because of this loving relationship, we've we've been espoused to Christ, as uh, as Paul talks about in his writings, and uh, and yeah, it's it's a different thing because we don't want to be those people that say at the end of the day, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these things and yet practiced sin and iniquity and turned away from you in other areas of our life, or are we going to be these people that we call call him Ishi, call him husband? I have sought to prepare myself to be the bride that has tried to get herself ready, looked into the the mirror of of what of the scriptures and and checked herself so that she could be found spotless and blameless whenever Christ returns. And so just a little study for you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.